Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's web demo. Before we begin, I'd like to cover a couple housekeeping items for our viewers. First, at the bottom of your audience console, you'll find a number of widgets for questions and additional resources. When you have questions for the presenter during the demo, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question. We will answer as many questions as possible at the end of the webcast, and if we run out of time, we will get back to you via email. Also, if you need any tech support during the demo, please use the help option. With that, I'll introduce our presenter for today's broadcast, Leslie Tan, Senior Solutions Engineer here at Perfecto by Perforce. Leslie, thanks for joining us on today's broadcast. Thank you, Shelby, and welcome to today's webcast surrounding uh, web application testing using the Perfecto solution. So I wanted to cover today's agenda quickly. What we're going to do is talk about the Perfecto Smart Platform Overview. I will then proceed into a live demo to show you what interactive or live testing looks like using the Perfecto Quality Lab. And then I will save some time for summary and questions and answers. So let's talk a little about the Perfecto Smart Continuous Testing Platform. As we see it, these are some of the pillars of challenges that are faced by continuous testing initiatives. So it falls into really uh, the test creation itself, um, the execution, the lab, and the analytics. So let me talk about each of these pillars uh, in a little bit. So as the first, uh, as the slide on the left indicates, complex test, cre complex test creations lead to high percentage of manual testing. And this is where it gets down to um, do we actually want to go ahead and, and perform uh, manual testing because we can trust the test, because we understand the storyboard, because we understand the workflow, or do we trust automation to take over and help us test at scale? So test creation is one of those things where uh, sometimes the challenge of creating the test via automation itself leads to folks, a lot of folks actually performing manual testing in and of itself. The second one, untrusted test automation leads to high percentage of manual testing. This is where I see a lot of folks look at their test results and say, I'm not sure if the results accurately reflect the lab itself, the application on the test, or the actual automation itself. So what basically happens is folks revert back to something of a known quality, which is to perform manual testing um, to accomplish what they need for the continuous testing initiative. The third one, which is the, the lab itself, so as you can see from the tangle of wires over there, in-house labs are becoming increasingly difficult to manage and costly. Um, I think on average most folks are looking at one full-time employee to manage their lab for them. From a management perspective, they're looking at um, making sure that the operating system as well as the browsers do have most of their hot fixes and patches installed. Um, not to mention if you're attempting to, uh, to use uh, Safari on a variety of Mac OSs, Macs are obviously a nightmare to manage or can be a nightmare to manage. And one of the things that I've seen a lot of our customers use is the concept of, yeah, we've got a few devices and I'm just going to keep it in a drawer. And so Jane comes along and checks out the device. She takes it with her to perform some tests. John comes along and wants that same device and lo and behold, that device is not available. Who has it? Who's checked it out? So the concept here of having a centralized lab, which can be accessed remotely from anywhere in the world, and I mean anywhere in the world, to conduct your testing either interactively or live or via automation is of huge appeal to folks that want to be able to scale the continuous testing integration. So think about having a static lab on-premise versus having devices and virtual machines for browser or with combinations in the cloud that can service your testing needs, again, from anywhere in the world. The last one is analytics, right? Reporting, reporting noise has too many false negatives um, resulting in, irre in irrelevant test feedback. So it comes back to that first point in conjunction with the complex test creation. Is my analytics accurate, accurately reflecting um, the test automation I'm trying to achieve? Is it ac accurately uh, depicting the lab being available or the results trustworthy because of what we are testing and under what conditions we are testing. So when we look at the, the challenges that are faced by, the, uh, by most folks trying to achieve continuous testing, these are what we typically see, the, the uh, creation of the test, the execution of the test itself, the lab, as well as the analytics. So I'm not going to go into too much detail with this slide, but the path to continuous testing, I think most folks would uh, look to achieve uh, something in this lower left-hand corner here that looks like a nice infinite circle that goes from planning and monitoring and generating and so on and so forth 
to what most folks atypically experience, which is the first half of the portion goes well, and then as it comes to daily stand-ups or sprints or, or uh, 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 weekly sprints, uh, what happens is unit testing isn't performed, smoke testing isn't performed, and so that, uh, that whole uh, DevOps process unwinds real quickly because what happens is um, while the rest of the process flows nicely, testing doesn't necessarily happen at the speed um, that is, uh, that is uh, want or achieved. So the benefits behind uh, some of the, uh, the, the path to continuous testing really is to reduce the, the testing bottleneck. And I think what happens is we test, we test at nauseum, and one of the things that happens is if the feedback doesn't go back to the developer fast enough or in a timely enough manner, that clogs up the whole process. So allowing, the, allowing fixes during the sprint rather than after it is another way of achieving uh, continuous testing. And then being able to turn testing obviously into a value instead of a liability is key uh, from going to what we typically experience here in the top left-hand corner uh, into here in the, in the lower right. So, so in terms of unified solutions uh, serving some of the DevOps, I'm just going to go ahead and populate this slide here. So I talked about this earlier on creation, execution, lab, and, and, and the uh, an, uh, an analysis or analytics. So test creation, we talked a little about the complexity behind it but also having authoring tools and validation behind your test creation. So I've created a test. It can run through a relatively easy storyboard, but how am I getting validation that what I'm expecting on the screen is what should be on the screen? So validation and authoring tools. Execution, being able to test execution within the pipeline at scale. And this is where we, we look at the two with execution and lab. Being able to select a framework of your choice um, Perfecto has a contribution to the open source framework called Quantum, which I will show you in a, in a little bit during my demo. But any framework you desire, how do you want to conduct the orchestration, and then how do you actually execute it at scale, which is where the lab comes into play. Being able to host um, you know, hundreds of devices in our data centers such that, again, it can be accessed from any, anywhere in the world and not having to figure out who has a particular device if you're dealing with an on-prem solution or if you're dealing with a drawer full of um, smartphones. And then the analytics itself, being able to get fast feedback, being able to look at root cause analysis to help you determine if the test is, in certain aspects, maybe a device being blocked because it's being used by both the manual test and automation, as well as being able to look at some root cause analysis. Am I failing because the validation isn't there or certain assertions aren't working? So when you look at these four pillars, that really, tr that really helps drive DevOps, DevOps with much greater effectiveness. Just going to populate these slides too. So when we talk about creation, the first thing I think about is, is matching skill sets with the test automation environment. So the nice thing is the flexibility to work with either codeless, um, a, a BDD or an OSS open source uh, open source framework. The idea here is to not impose something on your test automation or your developers, but rather take a, and help them embrace what they know, such that the creation of complex test cases can be undertaken relatively easy and smoothly. From an execution perspective, you know, we talk about highly scale open and managed test execution environments. The ability for you to say, I want to be able to scale this up and out, and I want to be able to do this um, in a controlled um, execution environment. The lab, so the secure enterprise grade lab that meets all of your digital transformation requirements. The idea here is it's always on, always available, uh, support staff, uh, on site with these labs 24-7 and being able to collect some of the results from the test itself, being able to look at um, HAR files, being able to look at device logs, being able to look at device vitals. These are things that are also part of the test that also have to be considered as well. And finally, under analytics analysis, the single pane of glass for all mobile test executions as well as web applications, being able to look and see how your tests are doing all in that single dashboard. The, uh, the test I'm going to actually conduct is one of, uh, of, of a responsive need where I'm actually deploying some devices as well as a browser OS combinations, and I'll get to that in just a few. So I want to talk a little about the, the uh, alignment with the Perfecto Smart Continuous Testing Solution with the four pillars I talked about. So we talked a little about the test execution and creation in that middle layer, being able to author a test, debug it, do validation, as well as maintenance of the test itself and then the orchestration and scheduling of the test. If you happen to be using Jenkins or Bamboo or some other CI tool, how do you actually go ahead and orchestrate those test environments? What are some of the triggers you might use 
in order to ensure that a developer's test has undergone some, some level of unit in smoke before he checks, uh, before he or she checks it in. And then at the, the lower part, we talk about the smart test lab. So some of the aspects that we have, so self-healing. So one of the, one of the things that we've seen um, uh, recent improvements for us really has been before, uh, before a test is executed, some folks would actually write a real pre-test test that says, is the Wi-Fi on the device actually working? We've gone through the process now of being able to make devices self, self-heal. That is, is there a pop-up blocking it? Is there a battery low warning? Is there, a, is there Wi-Fi present? So we're doing that in our lab environment to ensure that when you need a device or a virtual machine for testing, it's ready and available for you. And finally, on that top layer, talking about smart reporting and analytics, being able to look at the analytics of the test itself, being able to look at heat nets. How is it doing across devices? How, how am I just doing across different browser web combinations? Being able to look at root, root cause analysis. Uh, typically, when I tag a test with a failure reason, it helps me understand why that test has failed such that I can then come back and perform some root cause analysis on it. Cross-platform an, uh, an, uh, analysis, again, that single pane of glass, being able to look at test results from both web as well, desktop uh, web and, uh, and mobile as well. And then the continuous integration uh, analytics, being able to look at how some of the tests are performing from within your CI, uh, CI CD tool. Okay, that said, let me jump right into uh, right into the actual demo itself. I think this will be useful. Let me do a screen share here. So as you can see from uh, from what I just did quickly, we have an integration with single sign-on uh, that most folks would uh, that most of our customers would prefer to have because of the ability to sign in and control that from within your uh, within your uh, um, single sign-on environment. So a couple of pieces I wanted to touch on today. I talked a little about manual testing or live or interactive as we call it. Um, this is the Perfecto dashboard when you first sign into it. I'm going to go ahead and click on Open Device here. And over here you see I've got um, obviously a mix of both mobile devices, real devices, as well as web licenses. So one of the things we're talking about today is web, so let's focus on that. When I select a web license, it says, okay, what would you like to do? And I'm going to say I'm going to open a web session. So one of the things you'll notice is we support both Windows as well as, uh, as, well as Mac OS. So if I have to select the uh, Mac OS over here, you'll see the various flavors of Mac OS and the number of devices that are available to me within my demo environment, as well as the various um, browsers and resolutions and where these, uh, where this virtual, uh, then correct it, where these actual machines are running. The uh, Mac OS or Apple uh, end user license agreement prohibits folks from emulating or simulating. So these are physical Mac minis residing in our East data center. Uh, for the Windows aspect of it, I can obviously select the, the three most common the three most common uh, desktop um, OSs, as well as the uh, browser combinations, browser versions, and resolutions. And again, depending on where I'm running my test, I could specifically select some regions that I want. So I'm going to select Windows 10, Chrome. I'm going to go with 80 at a specific resolution, and I'm, and I'm going to run it in the east. A couple of things you'll notice here is if I wanted to, I can certainly enter uh, my URL to test in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to open this as a, uh, as a uh, standalone browser and then type into it. I, I, want, I want to be able to show you what it's like to be able to type into it and be able to have that uh, react as if it's on my, on my desktop. So I'm going to go in here and do Amazon.com. And over here, I'm going to look at the new Blink cameras. So if you haven't noticed, um, the uh, virtualized environment Go ahead and now come in and say, well, you know what? I want to see what the latest what the latest news happens to be on MSN.com. So again, it's uh, it's pretty similar to having this browser web combination on my desktop and being able to go in and look at specific uh, uh, specific um, websites. So one of the things you notice over here is I can certainly look at um, a device information. So it's Windows 10, Chrome 80 running at a specific resolution. Um, I can certainly say I want to I want to add a frame or not add a frame to it, but more importantly, if I'm just firing this up for uh, for purpose of just showing you what that looks like, I can certainly say come ahead and look at um, the test itself. 
Do I want to ignore it? Do I want to mark it as pass or mark it as fail? So what I can do here is basically say, uh, for example, simple unit test. And this will be recorded as part of the analytics as well, because one of the things we can certainly do with this live or interactive mode is go in and go ahead and test the, uh, the availability of the website, being able to negotiate and navigate between it. But when I close out, I can either ignore it as just a simple unit test, or I can mark it um, such that it counts towards the analytics as well. So from this perspective, it's relatively easy to go in, again, uh, grab a browser, desktop browser, or web combination, and conduct tests as if it's sitting on my desktop itself. So the other aspect of it really is when I think about automation and being able to do something at scale. So here is the analytics or the analysis portion of it. I talked about being able to look at continuous integration, continuous your know, CI/CD testing dashboard, and you'll see that I've got some tests that are running hourly, daily, 30 minutes, Windows, 8, 1 times, three browsers. And from this, what I can gather is how am I test doing? So at a very high level, uh, I'm running some tests here. I like to see tests that looks like they're running relatively flat test over test. Spikes like this cause me concern where one test takes 4 minutes 52 seconds, where most of the tests typically run in a minute 51, a minute 50 seconds. So from this dashboard, I'm able to look at specific jobs and say, I want to be able to go in and say, why is this job performing like this, for example? Right. So the ability to then go in and say, okay, so for this particular test, I've run on March 24th. Um, it ran two tests in that series. I can basically come in and look at the results. So the report library is where typically most of our most of our uh, focus is uh, is uh, centered on. You see me doing the simple unit test earlier on, being able to come in and say, all right, so let's look at this. Let's see what this test actually looks like. You see that I actually went up, and again, this is the uh, the ability to capture the video from that actual test itself. You'll see that I actually went up to Amazon.com. I think I typed com incorrectly, and it's corrected there. And then being able to type in blink. So it basically captures the, uh, the video of the test itself because we're visual creatures. I can say, hey, I clicked on this and I got that. It's much easier to share a, a, an MP4 file with somebody and say, this is what I clicked on, this is what I was expecting, and this is what I got back. So the idea is to be able to have a video artifact of the test itself. You notice a bunch of different things over here. You notice I'm running a, a Windows virtualized environment. I'll have the, uh, the browser OS combination as well. The integration with Jira such that I can actually create a bug within Jira if this was indeed a test that was failing, failing consistently, and we realize that there, there is an issue with the, with the release itself. Um, there's also test information or the report details in here, being able to look at variables, being able to look at what this automation framework was. In this case, it's interactive. If there's job names and numbers and branches, what some of the variables are behind it, what my access token was, what device I ran this on. So as you can see from the actual test itself, there is a lot of artifacts behind it that, uh, that support the test, video being one of them, being able to come in and look at the social report, also being able to download the full report. Being able to look at um, the report detail itself is just as important as the visual itself. So one of the things I talked about, too, was being able to test um, at scale. So here you see I've actually kicked off a bunch of test video automation. Let me go pull that automation into screen. So in this test automation, what I've done here is I've gone out and, um, and wanted to test uh, my hometown newspaper, the Boston Globe, being able to come in and say, go, go grab me an iPhone 11, um, running iOS 13. It's, uh, it's an Apple device. There's a device-specific ID. So too with this Galaxy S9. And here you'll see I have a bunch of desktop browser OS combinations that I've selected. The idea here is I want to be able to test the responsiveness of this site. That is, does the site perform the same on a desktop browser with combination as it does within Safari on an iOS device and Chrome on an Android device? So let me just go ahead and kick off this test real quick. And then one of the things we want to be able to do as soon as this test runs is to be able to come in and look and see how the, the uh, live streaming of the test is actually running. So as soon as it uh, acquires those devices, and I have a lot of print lines in this code, So within the actual um, test analysis, I have this ability to do a live stream over here. So if I actually click on that, 
you see all of the tests that are currently running within the browser OS combination that I've selected, as well as the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the uh, iPhone 11 that I've selected to run the test as well. Let's do it this way because it seems very interactive. So being able to then say, I want to see what the test actually looks like in real time on this iPhone 11. So I've gone ahead and selected that. It enters the 02110, selects the first choice in the array, and starts to enter some information required in order to get the subscription. So being able to see the test as I've kicked it off, your automation run in real time is important because one of the things I want to be able to do is see if the test has actually run successfully and see if it's acquired the device. So in this case it has. It'll go up and close up the test for me. I can now come back into my report library, refresh my screen, and see that after that simple unit test that I've conducted, I went ahead and conducted it on a bunch of uh, desktop browser OS combinations as well as on a, um, an iPhone 11 and a Galaxy Note 9. So we talked a little about the capabilities within, within the report library, being able to look at live stream, and then from a heat, heat map perspective, being able to come in and say, show me how uh, my tests are doing. So in terms of my response build validation, I've conducted nine tests. All nine of them have been successful. Let me go look at my, let me go look at my actual report itself. It will break it up for me in terms of browser or in terms of operating system or in terms of resolution or device model. So the ability to now come into the analytics portion of it and view the test results is um, very important, especially when we test and um, when we use automation for testing and we test at scale. So I wanted to come back and touch a little on the Perfecto Smart Continuous Testing Solution. I, I've spoken about test creation. I've spoken about uh, smart execution, the analytics, and the lab itself. So from a creation perspective, what you saw me use was Java inside of Quantum, which is uh, Perfecto's contribution to the open source community. Uh, again, feel free to use any framework that you have as long as you're doing the right web driver I.O. calls. You should be fine. Um, smart execution, being able to test uh, in parallel some of, the, uh, some of the, uh, the properties that I wanted to conduct. Um, the analytics, that single pane of glass, being able to see how both my uh, mobile as well as desktop browser OS tests have been running. And then the lab itself, being able to go in and say, I want to select a browser OS combination either on Mac OS or on, uh, or on Windows, and being able to subsequently just be able to, uh, to, to use that, um, that uh, browser OS combination interactively. So let's uh, let's go back to uh, to questions and answers real quick. Sure. Okay. The first question from the audience is, with regard to the IDE that you used, Eclipse, can I use IntelliJ brackets or something my test automation engineers are familiar with? The answer is yes, absolutely. And the idea here really is when we, when I talked about the uh, the creation, the authoring. The ability for your uh, test automation engineer, um, if they happen to be using Visual Studio, being able to use uh, Azure Pipeline for a, for a CI tool, yes, the answer is you may use any IDE as long as um, you're doing the appropriate uh, web drive instantiation. Uh, next question, Shelby. Sure. The next question is, is there a limitation as to the number of parallel web machines that can run? There is no limit. The, the limitation is uh, strictly by the number of licenses you subscribe to. So in my particular test, had I bumped it up to 20 concurrent sessions and I had 20 licenses available, it would run that test within all 20 instances of desktop browser OS combination from both the real devices as well as the uh, as well as the the, uh, the uh, desktop browser OS combination. So. There's no limitation. The limitation really is on the number of licenses you subscribe to. Thank you for that one. Do you have another question, Shelby? Uh, yep. Uh, you said you were using an open source framework called Quantum. Can I use a custom framework or another open source framework? The answer is yes. Um, so Quantum is Perfecto's contribution to the open source community. So the idea here is if you happen to be using c -sharp and wanted to use a Visual Studio framework, something that's custom written or available out there, if you wanted to use any one of the open source frameworks, yes, you may absolutely uh, use something besides Quantum. I use Quantum because obviously it's a, 
it's something easier for me to instantiate a lot of the uh, a lot of the specific calls that I need. I think that's it for hey, questions. Uh, okay. uh, yep, I think that's all that we have time for uh, today. But if we didn't get to your question, we will reach out to you via email. All right. Thank you, folks, for joining us for today's uh, webcast. We uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care now.